But the maiden made up her mind to set her brothers free, even though it should cost her her life. She left the hut, and going into the middle of the wood, she climbed a tree, and there passed the night. The next morning she set to work and gathered asters and began sewing them together. As for speaking, there was no one to speak to, and as for laughing, she had no mind to it. So she sat on and looked at nothing but her work. When she had been going on like this for a long time, it happened that the king of that country went a-hunting in the wood, and some of his huntsmen came up to the tree in which the maiden sat. They called out to her, saying, Who art thou? But she gave no answer. Come down, cried they, we will do thee no harm. But she only shook her head, and when they tormented her further with questions, she threw down to them her gold necklace, hoping they would be content with that, but they would not leave off, so she threw down to them her girdle. And when that was no good, her garters, and one after another, everything she had on, and could possibly spare until she had nothing left but her smock. But all was no good. The huntsmen would not be put off any longer, and they climbed the tree, carried the maiden off, and brought her to the king. The king asked, Who art thou? What wert thou doing in the tree? But she answered nothing. He spoke to her in all the language, languages he knew, but she remained dumb. But being very beautiful, the king inclined to her, and he felt a great love rise up in his heart towards her, and casting his mantle round her, he put her before him on his horse and brought her to his castle. Then he caused rich clothing to be put upon her, and her beauty shone as bright as the morning, but no word would she utter. He seated her by his side at table, and her modesty and gentle mien so pleased him that he said, This maiden I choose for wife, and no other in all the world. And accordingly, after a few days, they were married. But the king had a wicked mother, who was displeased with the marriage, and spoke ill of the young queen. Who knows where the maid can have come from, said she, and not able to speak a word, she is not worthy of a king. After a year had passed, and the queen brought her first child into the world, the old woman carried it away, and marked the queen's mouth with blood as she lay sleeping. Then she went to the king and declared that his wife was an eater of human flesh. The king would not believe such a thing in order that no one should do her any harm, and the queen went on quietly sewing the shirts and caring for nothing else. The next time that a fine boy was born, the wicked stepmother used the same deceit, but the king would give no credence to her words, for he said, she is too tender and good to do any such thing, and if she were only not dumb and could justify herself, then her innocence would be as clear as day. When, for the third time, the old woman stole away the newborn child and accused the queen, who was unable to say a word in her defense, the king could do no other but give her up to justice and she was sentenced to suffer death by fire. The day on which her sentence was to be carried out was the very last one of the sixth year of the years during which she had neither spoken nor laughed to free her dear brothers from. The Evil Spell The six shirts were ready, all except one which wanted the left sleeve, and when she had, w was led to the pile of wood, she carried the six shirts on her arm, and when she mounted the pile and the fire was about to be kindled, all at once she cried out aloud, for there were six swans coming, flying through the air, and she saw that her deliverance was near and her heart beat for joy. The swans came close up to her with rushing wings and stooped round her so that she could throw the shirts over them, 
And when that had been done, the swan's skins fell off them, and her brothers stood before her in their own bodies quite safe and sound. But as one shirt wanted the left sleeve, so the youngest brother had a swan's wing instead of a left arm. They embraced and kissed each other, and the queen went up to the king, who looked on full of astonishment, and began to speak to him and to say, Dearest husband, now I may dare to speak and tell you that I am innocent and have been falsely accused. And she related to him the treachery of the stepmother, who had taken away the three children and hidden them. And she was reconciled to the king with great joy. And the wicked stepmother was bound to the stake on the pile of wood and burnt to ashes. And the king and queen lived many years with their six brothers in peace and joy.